Good morning. Welcome to St Francis Church. Let's begin our service, shall we? And I'm hoping you have before you, Elizabeth of Hungry Words. What a shocking story. We think of abuse in the church as a modern thing. We think of abuse in the world as a cruel thing. So this woman, her story, what a story. But having given you a chance to read the words, hopefully today we we'll think of all victims of abuse. Today this might spur us to be vigilant in the safeguarding of today's church. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. And so we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen, Lord have mercy. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. Keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, who taught Elizabeth of Hungary to recognise and reverence Christ in the poor of this world, by her example, strengthen us to love and serve the afflicted and the needy, and so to honour your Son, the Servant King, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. So we come to our readings.
The reading comes from James chapter 2, verses 14 to 17. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and be well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by actions, is dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was ill and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for all that you give us, all that we have. Touch us now by your spirit that we may learn to use that rightly. Amen. Well, what readings. What a woman. 24. To die. Knowing happiness, giving life, bringing life into the world, to be abused by a man who seems to have fitted quite well as part of the Inquisition. You know, we are so often like those people James speak of. James speaks and he says, don't go along, see someone and go, oh, be well, be blessed, bless you, hallelujah, have you seen my fish badge? I'm a believer. I prayed for you. You know, the trouble is we don't pray for people. The problem is we do not stand with people. We do not stand with people in Christ. And Elizabeth, abused, broken, dying because of the brokenness of her body and mind and spirit, serving as a Franciscan third order, overcomes, still serves God, despite all the oppression and the hardship she has seen. And we say, oh, I've had such a tough life, I really can't do anything much. Have you seen what a life I've had? You show me someone who hasn't had a hard life in some way. It may be that they've had too much money and too much privilege and too much ability to do the wrong thing that's a hard life because in that we find the seeds that grow into the flowers that are weeds that separate us from god our readings today 
When did I visit someone who was sick or in hospital? When did I feed someone sitting in the shopping precinct, in the town centre? When did I stop and give someone the dignity of asking who they are? You know, we are standing. We had the Archbishop of York this week as Synod. And if you watch Synod, it's great. They're all sitting in this closed room with no masks. But I understand now that all the hot air keeps them free from virus. And you know, if we don't put it into action, that's all it is, hot air. Our faith is worth nothing if we do not see in the person before us the image of the invisible God. Our church is worth nothing if the children, the marginalised, the vulnerable adults, the broken, are not loved and brought to a place of healing. If our church stands by and goes, oh, well, they're a nice person. I don't need them to have a DBS. Oh, I like them. I'm sure they wouldn't do anything wrong. Look at the story of Peter Ball and one of the royal family who writes a letter saying, oh, he's such a lovely man. Don't tell him off. You know, we are here to protect the weak, the vulnerable, the broken, the needy. That's what it's about. And I hate Matthew 25 with a vengeance because I want to sing the Keith Green song every time. Lord, when did we see you naked? When did you come as a... You weren't that creepy guy who knocked at the doorway. That wasn't our ministry. You know, it's a lovely short sermon today. Everything is your ministry. If you claim to be a Christian, then everything, everyone, everywhere is our concern. A bishop spoke this week. He wrote a little note saying, isn't it funny that some pop singer who has had her dad release all of her money and control has attracted more praise and more acclamation and more praising God than the needs of the people pressed against the wire fence between Belarus and Poland than the people who can't breathe in Delhi than the starving in Somalia and in Tigray and in so many other places. Guys, today this is a simple message. If you want to wear a fish, if you want to wear a cross, if you want to say you're a Christian, don't walk by on the other side. Don't look the other way and safeguarding issues come. Do the right thing. Deny the wrong things in your hearts and minds, and we all have them. So often you go, but before the hand reaches, put it back in your pocket. Or put it in the air and say, God, lead me into the right paths. May the story of Elizabeth, may she touch and change our church and the church that you're part of which is the universal church. Let's act, let's be vigilant, let's show love, let's care. Let's make the reality of Christ a reality in the lives of those around us. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you today that the words of James telling us not to just say be blessed, but to be active. A faith without works, faith without action, leads to religion and impotency. Jesus talks of the sheep and the goats, may we be sheep. And when we see the goats, may we give them a sheep mask and a sheep hat and bring them into the fold as believers who are different, but not fallen. Lord, we pray for all this day who are broken and abused by the church and by every organisation, football clubs, rugby clubs, Cub Scouts, Guides, Brownies, Air Cadets, Sea Cadets, Army Cadets, anywhere where people gather, there is abuse and there is wrong. Help us never to look the other way, we pray. Amen. So let us declare our faith in God, 
We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our heart through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray. Father, as we come before you this morning, perhaps chastened by the words of your Son, and of James we understand that with you there is always balance so Lord we know that our actions come out of our prayer come out of our worship come out of spending time with you so we are here now to come to you in prayer and to ask you to direct us, to inspire us in the words we say and in the things that we do. Lord, we pray that you would lay on our hearts now the people and the situations that you want us to pray for so that our prayers may go before us and we may then follow with our actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And Lord, we pray for our world that is suffering in so many ways all the things that Vic has mentioned in Belarus, in Delhi, in Tigray, in other parts of our world, in Afghanistan, where there is starvation. Lord, in Armenia, where there have been more clashes with troops from Azerbaijan. parts of Canada now suffering floods. So many things to concern us. So many things that we know concern you. Because you love the world you have made. So Lord, we pray that you would be present, be active through your church, through anyone who is willing in these places and in the places that we haven't mentioned. Lord, as you look on your world, come down with mercy and help us to do better. Help us to remember those who suffer in our prayers as if we also suffered with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Father, we pray for our own country, for our own government, for our own local governments, for our own communities for the things we see and hear going on around us, for the people we know who are in need in our own communities. Lord, we pray that our government would be humbled, 
that it would be wise and it would be right in the way that it leads us that the recent scandals about MPs and their lobbying tactics and their expenses claims would bring a new a new purpose and a new attitude into the Houses of Commons that those who occupy the, that place would realise that they are in a place of privilege but also a place of responsibility and they are there to set an example for the rest of us in how to live with integrity Lord, we pray for all who are in positions of power and those who aspire for positions of power, those who aspire to go into politics. So many do so because of good motives, but are then corrupted by the system when they get into it. Lord, we pray that you would raise up men and women of integrity who would remain close to you and close to the things that please you pray the same for our local government for our town council for all who have positions of influence for our church leaders for our civic leaders for those we look up to and follow Lord, may we be wise in the people we choose to be our heroes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all today who are in need of healing, in need of counsel and guidance, in need of strength. those who need to know that they are loved and worthwhile. Father, we pray particularly today for those who are victims of abuse, in whatever name, Lord, especially those who are abused by the church or have been abused by the church in the past. Lord, we pray for a right sense of remorse. We pray for right actions to put right the wrongs of the past and to ensure that they don't happen again. Not just to look away or sweep it under the carpet or say, well, that was then. We're not like that. We're all like that. And unless we accept that we have the potential to do harm, then we may easily fall into that trap. So keep us on our guard, Lord, and help us to look out for the weak, for those who are abused, exploited, for those who are wrongly used, to speak up on their behalf, even if it makes us uncomfortable or unpopular. Give us that sense of righteousness and compassion. And Lord, we ask for forgiveness for the sins of the past. proper restitution would be made, that you would bring healing to those who have been damaged. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Father, we pray for those who mourn today. We pray for the family of Olive Gardner as they prepare for her funeral. The family of Ken Gant, of Betty Satterthwaite. Of all who have passed recently, are those who are approaching death. We pray for those who still carry pain because of the loss of a loved one. For your healing, for your comfort, for your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept the prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. To crown all things, there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. The peace be with you here and wherever you are. May you know God's presence, his healing, his health, and most of all, his blessing on you and blessings from you to others for we come with bread and wine and with confidence we can say the lord is here his spirit is with us so lift up your hearts we lift them to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should always sing your glory, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is to come. Your love, made visible in Jesus Christ, brings home the lost restores the sinner and gives dignity to the despised. In his face your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one in your kingdom a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give voice in your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our prayer, our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us, his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. For great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God who called Elizabeth of Hungary to serve you and gave her joy in walking the path of holiness. By this Eucharist in which you renew within us the vision of your glory, strengthen us all to follow the way of perfection until we come to see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we say, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May Christ who makes saints of sinners who has transformed those we remember today. Raise and strengthen you that you may transform the world. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, Son, 
and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Stay safe. Be blessed. And if we can do anything to help, you know where we are. We're here to serve. That's what church is. Have a good day.